Yes. Hi, guys. Hi. My name is Mercy. Um, I'm a twerk now. I'm uh, an ICU nurse, and I've been an ICU nurse for a while now. But I've also um, I've also worked as a nurse for 13 years, but critical care for five years. Um, nursing in America is pretty much very um, straight cut. So you're there to work but it's very, very autonomous, meaning we nurses make a lot of decisions for, for, you know, for the patients. So I know it's different in Kenya where you're waiting for the doctor to make a decision for you, but here you make a lot of decisions. Um, we use a lot of medical, um, electronic medical charting. So meaning computers like this ones. So this is a typical, um, this is a typical nursing station. Let me see if I can see it. This is a typical nursing station, but I'm in a nursing station that there's nobody so that I don't you know, include any patients or anything. Um, we typically in the hospital work 12 hour shifts. So I am working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, you have a charge nurse, you have medical doctors, but usually, you know, the nurses usually we are by ourselves and we make a lot of decisions unless something major is happening. We do make a lot of decisions. Um, the patient ratio, meaning like how many patients you get per nurse depends on what unit you work. I work in the ICU, we get two patients or one patient depending on how critical the situation is. Um, on the other floors, you depending on the state, you can get up to seven, five, four, you know, depending on the state. Um, working here, the hospitals are divided in different, different um, wow. units. So you have the ICU, you have the med surge, you have lab and delivery, you have um, like ortho, and, and then again, Depending on the hospital, you get different ICUs too. You get like cardiac ICU, neuro ICU, uh, trauma ICU, and surgical ICU. So all those are different. Um, I am a cardiac ICU nurse, but sometimes I travel on medical ICU, which I find medical ICU to be much more easier than cardiac ICU. Cardiac ICU is very hard. Um, what else can I tell you guys? Nursing here is not easy because if you don't know what you're doing, then you can't join the crew because nurses are very, 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 I want to say very protective of their patients. So if a patient is coming in and they have a nurse that has no idea what, what they're doing, it can be a really big problem. So the team can be like, we don't want her here because she doesn't know what she's doing. She's going to kill the patient. So basically, working here is working as a team, but you really have to know what you're doing. I realized, I mean, I've not been to Kenya for like 25 years, but I realized when I left, it was more of like um, book studying. So you study a lot, you study, you study, you study a lot, you study, you study, you study a lot. But as a nurse here, it's more clinical. Though you're going to study, but are you understanding what you're doing? And then once you get to clinical, you have to be a good clinical nurse. You can be book smart all you want. You can get all the airs that you want. But <laughs> if you're not good at clinical wise, you're not going to be able to make it, you know? So one thing I want you guys to know is we are very autonomous, meaning we make a lot of recommendations, a lot of decisions. We do not wait for the doctor to tell us what we need to do. We recommend, but if they say no, then we don't continue. But sometimes we really advocate for them for, um, we really advocate for the patient and we can go higher up and say, I've been telling the doctor to do this and this is not what he's doing. And I want this done. So we don't just, you don't just sit there and listen to the doctor and say, oh yeah, he said I give him this. You can't do that. Like you have to think critically of what you're doing before you do it. So that's the first and foremost. When you come here, you're gonna be shocked that you're gonna make a lot of decisions. 
So you have to know what you're doing when you're making those decisions. Secondly, it's very hard work because Americans are very sick. They're very, very sick. When you get admitted to a hospital in the United States, you're sick. And here they don't refuse people and tell them, oh, you'll pay before you come in. No, everybody comes into the hospital and everybody's sick from diabetes, heart failure, um, trauma, cardiac surgery. I mean, they're sick. People are sick. So you, you, you really will be like, oh my God, these patients are really sick. So you have to know what you're doing again, over and over again. You pass your NCLEX, but after your NCLEX, get that time to train and know what you're doing, you know? Um, I don't know what else I can tell you guys so that you can prepare yourself to, to come here and work. Um, we do, I already told you, we do a lot of electronic chatting. So you have to learn how to do your, your electronic chatting. We use Sana, Epic, Meditech. Those are things we use to document. So we don't do it on paper. And then I don't know if you're in the WhatsApp group, but if you are, you know that we don't, we don't um, take pills from like somewhere. We get them from the Omnicell or the Pixels where you put your patient's stuff and then it comes out. So we have that. Um, but yeah, so I think that's most of the things that you should expect when you come into America. Expect to be, um, how do I say it? Expect to be really, really knowledgeable. If you don't know what you're doing, you're not gonna be able to do it. And expect to take your very sick patients. Americans are sick, so expect to take your very sick patients. Expect to come in, run, and be an independent thinker. If you're not an independent thinker, you're not gonna be able to do it. If you're sitting there depending on somebody, you're not gonna be able to do it. You, you're really not. So be an independent thinker, be um, sharp in your work, like know what you're doing, advocate for yourself, advocate for your patients. Um, but yeah, and also, let me tell you, we work 12 hours, but we get a 15 minute break, two 15 minute breaks, one 30 minute break. So that's how the shift goes. So right now I just asked so I can come out and like take a break real quick and talk to you guys. But then other than that, patients have call lights. They call, you go in. Some units have CNS who are like certified nursing assistants that can help you change the patients, take care of the patients. But you do a lot of the work. So, yeah. But um, David, I'm going to give it back to you because I think it's time for me to go back to work. Do you guys have any questions? I think they, they'll, uh, you go back to work, they, they'll have the questions. Uh, or when you come back, we will be able to, to, to give, give you to answer them when they have questions. Or Diana, what no, do you I can take five minutes if anybody has any questions. I think there was a question about payment. About payment. Someone was asking how much would they be paid in the US. Oh, about payment. Yeah. <laughs> Pesa. <laughs> so, so it depends. Yeah. So it, it's funny because it depends on what state you are in, right? And how much experience you have. So um, like in Delaware, they start nurses off at $34 an hour, right? the new nurses at $34 an hour. So we get paid hourly, but we get like our checks come in every two weeks. So it's, a, you know, every two weeks you get paid and that will probably be like um, maybe $2,000, $2,000, $3,000 every two weeks. But that's for new nurses, right? But somebody that's an older nurse, 15 years, 10 years, five years, three years, they go with that gap. So you can start at 45, 50, and it depends on the state. Hawaii pays 
the new nurses, they start them off at $52 an hour. And then um, most, most of the ones that are older like me maybe start with $72 an hour, right? But travel nurses are different because you're there for a contract, you're done. So that's like $110 an hour. So that's like $4,000 a week or $5,000 a week. So, but to become a travel nurse, you have to have at least one year of one or two years of experience in your specialty and then start traveling. And then you can negotiate your own pay. So that's how, that's, that's what you're looking at. But there's states that just don't pay enough, you know, states that people don't want to go to don't pay enough. And the states that people want to go to, they pay enough, but getting their license is really crazy. So how it works in America, because we have so many states, is there's different states that have gotten into a compact where you can work with one license in different states. And then there's states that you have to get their own license. So California, you have to get their own license. Hawaii, you have to get their own license. I worked in Maryland and I had a Maryland license. Maryland license, you can work in Delaware, you can work, you can work anywhere that's a compact state. So for your homework, you can go and look for what states are compact and know like, if I get this license, am I gonna be able to travel and work on these different states? Because every state is different and they charge different money for different licenses. So if I were you guys, I would I would want to pass my NCLEX and do it in a state that is a compact. So that way you can move around, right? Instead of having to get a different license from different states, because it's almost like different countries. And they have different laws. Every state has different laws and they pay differently. So yeah. Any other question? Okay, there's nothing down the question. There's a question here. How many days a week do you work? I think that was the question. How many days a week do you work? Three days. Three days a week, 12 hour shifts. Three days a week, 12 hour shifts. Okay. But right now I'm on a contract of four days, 12 hour shifts. So I'm so tired because I'm on a contract for four, so 48 hours in a week. Right. But Anything normally, I think right, you, but no, you say that again? I was saying, uh, you answered the second question about how many hours do you work in a day, in a shift? Yeah, I told yeah. them 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours, 12 hour shifts, we get 30 minute breaks and two 15 minute breaks. Any okay. other questions? I don't see any other question. Maybe if I get one during the session. Do you have paid leaves or paid holidays? Do you have paid holidays? Um, yes, every one of our like Christmas, Thanksgiving, all those are paid holidays and you get paid double the pay. So if you're working 34, if you're pay, getting paid $34, you get 60, 68. It's double pay, but there's holidays that are not. But you, you have to take, if you're staff, you have to take vacation. If you, I guess, I guess you guys, this holiday does not, I guess holiday means vacation for us. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. Must you go to, so, you, you, you must differentiate that. When they say holiday, yeah. they mean vacation day, but you yeah. know, holiday means the days that you are supposed to be off and you are working anyway. So that is the, that's the difference. When the, I think when Kenyans ask you whether you have a paid holiday, the meaning when you go on vacation, are you paid? Oh, no. Yeah. You have to have you have, you accrue some PTO time, and then you, uh, you and then you request for time off. So you accrue your vacation time. It takes a year to accrue that time, and then you you use that time to pay yourself on vacation 
but we don't get paid for vacation. So when you say holiday, that means like the days like Christmas, New Year's, those days we are paid double the pay when we work, but they always need us to work, you know? Yeah, and they point out that although it's a holiday, it doesn't mean you are not going to work. It doesn't mean, it just means that I am going to pay you for more for coming, coming work, in. But it's uh, you you will have to show up to work. It's yes. different from Kenya where if it's a holiday, people will stay at home, but here we'll pay you to come come to work. Yeah, you can stay at home. People are sick. So, I mean, if nurses have to stay home, then nobody will get better. <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's a different thing. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, let me go back so I don't stay off the unit too long. But if you have any questions, I think, I mm -hmm. think... David or anybody can give you guys an e my email and then any questions you have, just email me. Yeah, we have an arrangement. So uh, Dana is going to collect the questions and then they'll, they'll bring them to us, uh, to you and to the CGA Finance Office. So that's Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you guys and good luck. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for the presentation. I think we'll forward the questions to David. Oh yeah, and this is okay. the scrubs, we wear. we wear the scrubs. So we wear a color uniform so that you can always have it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You guys have a good one and thank you so much.